The Stanford Cancer Institute was originated in 2005, and our goal was really to bring together all of the elements at Stanford that contribute to cancer research and cancer care. Stanford has a culture of innovation. The function of this medical center is to advance medical knowledge for the benefit of patients. Many people have called it bench to bedside, that is taking laboratory research and applying it to the clinic, but it's actually much more than that. It's also taking observations on patients, taking those observations back to people who are doing basic investigations, and really understanding mechanisms of disease. Cancer is a multifactorial disease, so we have a number of translational programs at Stanford. One is in immunology, uh, we have a, a world-leading immunology program and are developing therapeutics both with vaccines and with cells that will arrest the growth of cancer cells. Immunotherapy is, is using the immune system to treat a disease. The antibodies that we have circulating in our blood are made of many cells and if we can get the cells and clone them one at a time, then all of the subsequent cells from that one cell make the same antibody. That's called a monoclonal antibody. When we treated the first patient with a monoclonal antibody and actually was cured, this was totally unexpected. We were making something custom made just for him. It was the first time we'd ever tried something like that. The tuximab grew out of this discovery and it became standard treatment for the disease all around the world now. Stanford has the unique capability of taking some of the world's leading science and applying it clinically. We developed the first linear accelerator with Henry Kaplan. That has led to substantial improvements in the care of cancer patients. Radiation oncology is probably one of the uh, most renowned departments in the world. We're very well known for developing novel radiation therapy. The old treatment of radiation was we set up the field, kind of resemble the shape of the tumor, while the tumor is moving up and down. And when the tumor gets in the field, we'll get it. And then when the tumor moves out of the field, we may miss it. The next approach we went to is to develop a machine that can track the motion of the tumor. And that came the CyberKnife. The CyberKnife was actually meant for treatment of brain tumor. And then we learned that, hey, we can actually track the motion elsewhere. And so we actually developed the first protocols to treat lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, and treat prostate cancer with the CyberKnife. We have one of the world's leading imaging programs. So based on a knowledge of the biology of tumors, we can image at a molecular level some of the malignancies at a very early stage and hopefully catch them before they grow too large and impair the ability of the patient to survive. In addition, one of the bone marrow transplant forerunners, Dr. Carl Bluma, established just a terrific program in bone marrow transplantation. Carl brought the concept of team-based clinical care, and I think that's sort of a core value. What we've learned in the setting of bone marrow transplantation is it's actually the new immune system from the donor that helps kill off any residual disease in the patient. And that was something that took quite a while to figure out. The bone marrow is derived from what are called hematopoietic stem cells. These are sort of the mother cells of the bone marrow. But that was really the, the entry of using cells as an immune-based therapy. The way we look at cancer through the eyes of stem cell biologists have given us a unique possibility to isolate the dangerous cells in the cancer and then the steps leading up to it. Where science is going, away from the individual investigator in his lab in the corner, you know, studying stuff, it's much more of a team-based endeavor. They need lots of different types of expertise to really move projects forward. And so that's, I think, a real strength, is developing these teams, having them interact, and develop innovations that can cross different ways. They're all within stone's throw of each other. It facilitates interaction. So you can meet someone in the parking lot and cook up a new collaboration, or you can see a patient and ask how they're doing. You're constantly meeting people who are really at the forefront of their field. It's really extraordinary, the quality of the people that come through this place. We're there to really create new knowledge, and that's why Stanford is different.